So just so you see, we have an unexpected guest. That is Hicks. And yeah, here. Um, but we. Uh, but but Benedict has. He's gotten his meds, and he's also got his. Uh, he's also got his pumpkin. He is chowing down. So, <clears throat> I think we're all good. I'm gonna leave the door closed for a little bit. How you doing, everybody? Nice to be back. Nice to be back, everyone. This is the second half of issue 16 of the Grim Gazette. Issue 16 of the Grim Gazette, and I am your host, T. Morris. Call me T, T. Monster, or Twitch Dad, and I represent Old Spirits Investigations. We are a small, <clears throat> but scrappy, and uh, and mighty paranormal group based out of Northern Virginia, started by myself and Phil Rossi. We have an, um, we have, uh, an investigation reality documentary show something we have a youtube series and it's called old spirits so if you want to find out more about what we do how we do and where we have been this is where you want to go and this is our weekly paranormal magazine where i do weird news i talk about um paranormal analysis i look at some clips on youtube or on the Twitter or on uh, Instagram or on Tickety Talk, and I go hi <laughs> as I did tonight. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, the, the 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 one with the coat hanger is still kind of. I'm like, mm, you know, I'm 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 not believe. If that is truly paranormal, that is got to be one of the most bored ghosts I've ever seen, ever captured on on video. Really, really. I bet zero regrets. I bet. Anyway, thank you all so much for being here. And, uh, oh, you're just hanging out for a couple minutes. Well, that's okay, Caribou, because right now we're in the second half of the Grim Gazette where I go into the Paranormal Deep Dive. And the Paranormal Deep Dive is where I have a topic. I have a subject, subject something that is happening in, in paranormal circles. And I do a deep dive into what it's all about and... This week we are going to be talking about or uh, Penhurst the the Penhurst Paracon of 2024 because that was this past weekend. Went to um the Penhurst Paracon. It is just outside of Philadelphia and it is actually held on the site of Penhurst. Now, in previous footage review shows, you've seen me standing in line getting ready to get into Penhurst Paracon. And you know that this is an event that happens on site of the Penhurst Asylum. <clears throat> now, I don't think this is the... I don't think this is a, a relatively new event, but it is a relatively new event. Basically, what happened was they had done some smaller Penhurst Paracons. And as of last year, they just started doing them on the site of the Penhurst Asylum. That is my that is my 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 most critical thought about the Penhurst Paracon. It feels weird being on site of Penhurst and doing and, and, and doing a convention there. Man, does that feel weird? It does. It just feels weird to me. I I feel like a thousand eyes are watching us at all times. It's a very intense uh, feeling, very intense feeling. But uh, I can talk about it because I, I went to Penhurst Paracon last year, as, as I mentioned with the footage that I was sharing with everybody. And the first thing I want to get off the bat about Penhurst Paracon 2024, the logistics were astounding. I mean, everything that was wrong with Penhurst Paracon in 2023, boy, did they pivot in 2024. The organization was top notch. We walked in and it was clearly marked general admission over here, <clears throat> VIP over here, 
RIP over here. Yeah, that was that, that was one of the other issues. They had a VIP and a super VIP. Um uh super VIP VIP admission and really they had one VIP tag. So so that was a huge improvement because they re, they rebranded the the super VIP, they called it RIP. So there was RIP, VIP and then general admission. And unlike the, that's not, we, we're actually thinking about starting up a new, a new uh, segment on old spirits called and calling it ghosts or kittens. Cause right now you can probably, you can probably just hear something rapping at my door. Um, yeah, it's not ghosts. It's cats. It's, it's kittens. It's kittens. Um, did you leave some food behind? Because I think that's what he's eating. Let me just double check, and then I'm going to open the door for the kittens. Hold on one second. He didn't leave much more. Here they come. Whee! <laughs> yeah. Now he has kittens. Actually, no. Uh, Caribou, this year was so much better organized. Because So let me explain what happened. So what I found out, or what we found out, me and Phil, was that the person that was supposed to be in charge of parking and, you know, when to tell people to come in, they quit the day before. Now, this is the event in 2023. So it's opening day 2023, and people who are wanting to get in early for general mission, you know, to stand in line for, say, two hours to make sure they could get in on time, they were showing up at 730, and they had to call the cops. They had to call local police to say, this is private property. You're not allowed to be on this space. And because they had nobody organized or set up to handle parking, parking was a free-for-all. People were parking places where they weren't supposed to be parking. And then somebody made the brilliant decision, well, let's go, let's go on ahead and let's let everybody in because there was such a crowd. So what was supposed to be one line for people to check in, well, sorry, for, for, for where there were supposed to be multiple lines for people to, to check in, super VIP, VIP, and general mission, it became one huge ass line. And... There was nobody there telling them, oh, yeah, if you got VIP, you can skip the general admission line, just go straight on in. And it was it was pure pandemonium. This year, however, Penhurst Paracon 2024, the moment you walked in, there were signs that said RIP VIP this way, general admission this way. And then there were actual there was an actual staff that were there who not only guided you in and told you where to go, they would say, okay, <clears throat> if you are if you are general admission, do not bother until coming here until um, 11 o'clock because we're not letting you in until 11 o'clock. If you had VIP, you could come in at 10 o'clock. If you were RIP, you came in at 9 o'clock. And everybody was accessible then. So you had the you had the three different groups, you know, they staggered the entrances. People came on in, and they didn't start the panels until 1 o'clock. So already, the logistics that were telling you, you go this way, you go this way, you go this way, just spot on. They freaking nailed it. Some other things they did logistically that I thought were terrific. They actually set up in one of the, in one of the, um, in one of the buildings, they set up a VIP RIP lounge. So if you had VIP or RIP, there was a place where you could go where if you wanted to grab a bite to eat and just sit down somewhere, you could. Nice big group tables in case you wanted to make some new friends. It was it was really, really nice. So that was another big plus was, um, was the VIP RIP lounge. I have done two years at the Penhurst Paracon with VIP. And that's been nice. That's been really nice. Uh the, the way they had the line set up for the different guests, again, handled really well, better than last year. They uh, Now, I cannot fault Penhurst Paracon for what happened with Project Fear last year. 
nobody expected Project Fear to be as big as they were because they had literally just been canceled the week of Penhurst Paracon. They got there and they were freaking rock stars. And their line was huge. But that wasn't, you couldn't fault Penhurst because they didn't expect, even, even Dakota and the cast of Project Fear did not expect that kind of reception. And they tried to temper it this year saying, you know, it, it, it won't be it won't be like last year. No, it was even bigger. But logistically, Penhurst was ready for it as well as for the Ghost Hunters and the Ghost Brothers. Um, it felt like where you found people was better organized than the way it was the year that the, the first year I went. First year I went, it seemed like everybody was everywhere. Like like Jack Al Jack Osborne was just tucked away in this one odd corner and Amy and Adam were tucked away in this corner in the Devon building. And then, you know, this time it was Project Fear, Ghost Hunters, Ghost Brothers. They were all under one. They, they were all within, um, within earshot of each other with the exception of Amy and Adam. They liked being indoors, so they were indoors, which actually turned out great for them because, yeah, uh, we had rain on the first day and it was it was rough. It was really rough. So let's talk a little bit about what happened. Um, the way we broke it down, the way we decided how we were going to do Penhurst Paracon, because the first year we did it, it was me and Phil, just the two of us. And we had a great, we had a great time, all logistics aside. The logistics were a nightmare trying to get in there. Now, they did try to course correct Sunday, and they did a great job with that. And I want to make sure this is clear, too. The staff of Penhurst and the people that were volunteering and helping out all weekend, can we just get a huge thank you for the hard work that, that, that you all did? That was the, the staff, the staff of the event. And in particular, the Penhurst staff were absolutely spot on. In fact, going even further, Unlike last year, this year they actually had taken one of the buildings and they're turning the building into a museum, a museum about Penhurst. And they acknowledge, yes, at the end it was it was a it was a horror show. You know, there's a reason why you've got the the um, the, the title of the of the Penhurst um, Asylum documentary that basically led to its closing was called Suffer the Little Children. It is a hard, hard watch. While we were waiting to see Project Fear, um, Pip watched the documentary while we were standing in line. And and it was it was it was it was getting her like in the core. It, it it's it's a it's a tough watch. But what we all found out from the staff that were manning the museum Penhurst wasn't always like that. Everybody remembers Penhurst for the way it was when it was closed. But before then, it was a very different place. In fact, people loved it. It helped a lot of people. When it's like many asylums, when it started out, one, it wasn't considered an asylum. It was considered a um, uh, an academy, a school of sorts. That were supposed to help people that had learning disabilities, reading disabilities, what have you. It was supposed to guide them into a better direction. Um, and and before they reached the point that they reached in the eighties, in you know when they when it first opened and and for many decades, it was a beloved location. It was it, they were they were they were held in the highest regards. For the good work that they did but around the 50s 60s 70s that was when people were saying well can we do it cheaper can we do it for cheaper can we do it for cheaper and as early as the 40s people that people that that didn't want to deal with a troublesome family member would literally drive up drop somebody off and then leave them and then that became almost habitual. And it's chilling to talk about. And 
that's kind of the vibe that I was picking up this time. There were people that once they were left in Penhurst, they they didn't have any interaction. No interaction with the outside world. No interaction with um, anyone other than hospital staff. They didn't get visitors, nothing. It was near the end, it was just it was a a a menagerie of cruelty. That's the best way to describe it. Um and I think that was kind of the vibe that at least Pip was picking up, where she was like, you know, these people were just, were, they would just be dumped here. And now suddenly here they are, they're still here. They're still here in some, in, in some way, they are still here. And now all these people are here and they're laughing and they're, they're, they're talking to them and they're reaching out to them and they're, they're probably terrified because they don't know how to handle that. Or they're wondering why are all these people suddenly here? And why are they all why why are they coming into where we live? And you know, and you know, the the you can speculate till the cows come home. But that is that is the thing about Penhurst that makes it such a unique event but also a very intense event. Is the fact that that you're not just talking about this place and and uh and, and, you know, talking about paranormal investigation and how to do it at Penhurst and all this stuff, you're there. You're actually on the property. And unfortunately, the, the live stream, both on YouTube and Twitch, ended early, but I did film it. Uh, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. But but the... Um, the uh, they do open the buildings... And if you want to try to attempt to do paranormal investigating, you can. You just have to accept the fact that this is a public event. And people are just coming in and out. There's a lot of foot traffic. And you might get nothing. But we'll talk about that in a second. So based on what Phil and I experienced last year at Penhurst Paracon, we said, okay, we're going to make Saturday our panels day. We're going to do our panels on Saturday and on Sunday – We'll make that meet and greet. You know, we'll 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 see if we can't meet some of the some of the some of the people, and uh, we'll do some exploring and some some paranormal investigating if we can. So let's talk about that. Now, the reason we did that was because, based on our experience last year, and Penhurst, I give a lot of credit for Penhurst. One of the things they do is they keep it simple. They do panels. Um, you know, through the day, starting at one. And then they repeat the same schedule. I believe it was a repeat of the same schedule on Sunday. And they don't they don't make it a, a topic of discussion. They don't even have moderators. Well, this time they well when I, when the, their moderators are basically people that were passing around the, the microphone. They are all like open Q and A. There's no subject. There's nothing, you know, pertaining to, oh, how how is the best way to organize a private investigation? Nothing like that. It is open Q&A with the audience. If they have moderators, their, their job is just to make sure that the microphone is getting passed around and people are getting to ask their questions. That's it. And the way they do things is they, they keep it simple. Instead, But instead of starting at 11, which was general admission when everybody would come in, they went on ahead and they said, okay, we're going to do panel starting at one by then everybody who is who wants to be here for the day is here and then at one o'clock we have the first panel and then another one at two three four and then we wrap up the day at five so uh and then they, they just basically take that same schedule and repeat it in case you missed it saturday you know you do it on sunday so we said saturday was going to be panel day and it went ghost brothers Ghost Hunters, Project Fear, and then finally it closed with Kindred Spirits. So let's talk about the Ghost Brothers. Uh, if you're unaware of who the Ghost Brothers are, the Ghost Brothers are um, <clears throat> Dalen, Jawan, and Marcus. And if you want to see any of these talks, I live streamed all of them. So you can find them under our live cast over at Old Spirits Investigations on, on YouTube. Uh, I also stream them on Twitch, so you should be able to stream them on Twitch or see them as VODs on Twitch. 
but you'll you'll definitely be able to find them at Old Spirits Investigations. So one of the things that they came clean about, and I did not know this, and I'm I consider myself a big old fan of the Ghost Brothers. What was happening was was that uh, Day, Daylon, Jawan, Marcus, and uh, some rando white dude that they were that they were teaming up with who was who was a hardcore skeptic. The four of them did a video on YouTube, posted it on Daylon's channel, and it sat there for five years. And then, out of the blue, <laughs> at, you know, five years, one video, and out of the blue, um, Discovery calls Daylon and says, we're looking to do a show where it is paranormal investigation, but the twist is, is that instead of it being, you know, white people, we want to do one with people of color. So would you be interested in doing this provided you are a paranormal, a professional paranormal investigator? And Dalen was like, of course I'm a paranormal, a professional paranormal investigator. I would love to, uh, to talk to you further about this. So right after the Discovery Channel got off the phone with, 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 uh, with Dalen, he immediately calls Juwan and he goes, Juwan, you're going to get a phone call from somebody. If they ask you if you're a paranormal investigator, you are a professional paranormal investigator, you say yes. This is what they're telling everybody. This is their opening statement, story, what have you, to everybody in the house. They're saying, if someone asks if you're a, paranormal, a professional paranormal investigator, just say yes. He then repeats the same message to Marcus. And sure enough, uh, Juwan's phone rings. And it's like, hi, I'm so-and-so from Discovery Channel. I just uh, want to know, um, are you a professional paranormal investigator? And Juwan was like, yes, yes, I am. When they called Marcus, Marcus went one step further and was like, are you kidding? I just got back from a paranormal investigation. Come on. So when you watch the, episode, the, the premiere episode of Ghost Brothers, that was Juwan... Dalen and Marcus's second paranormal investigation ever. So you talk about faking it till you make it. They nailed it. Uh, and I am not kidding. My face hurt so much after they were on stage because they were just killing it. They were just um, completely unhinged. They were telling some of the best stories from stuff behind the scenes just stuff from their lifestyle i mean it was it was hysterical they were absolutely unhinged and I, I i just ate up every minute of it that was when i felt the most fanboy i won't i won't lie that was when i felt the most fanboy when um when they were on stage they were they were they were a stitch but the best story uh <laughs> the best story now, at least for me, my favorite story. And again, you can watch this on the lives that I've got posted over at uh, over at Old Spirits Investigations over on YouTube. Let me just uh, let me just pull that up. Make sure to go to the lives because that's where they'll be. Um, but uh, one of the best short uh, one of the best stories that they told was Dalen's Dalen's mom is a pastor, and uh, he. he he was never sure where she stood on him doing this thing. And it was like, it was some big family dinner and Dalen was in there with his mom and he was saying, now mom, come on, you gotta be proud of me for everything we've accomplished because we have no idea what we are doing. And he said, his mom stopped, looked at him and said, you are absolutely right, Dalen. I am extremely proud of what you have accomplished because you really don't know what you're doing. If you did know what you're doing, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing in the first place. And then she left the room, leaving him in the kitchen to ponder those words. And I mean, damn, son, damn. That was, that was just absolutely hardcore. I suggest you let that one marinate. I mean... Wow, <laughs> the ultimate mic drop. So, so, um, so that was the Ghost Brothers. They were, they were, they were incredible. They were 
an absolute joy. Then the ghost hunters, well, the ghost hunters were late. They got held up. They got held up. And, uh, and they were held up because their line was that big of people just coming in just to, just to say hey and get signatures and things like that. When they finally did get there, uh, there was uh, basically a change had occurred for the guy, poor guy running sound. The Ghost Brothers were three guys on, on mics, three guys. And there was actually a total of four mics because massive shout out to the sound guy over at Penhurst Paracon because he actually saw me in the front row and he was looking at my, at my camera and he goes, you know, I could set this up where if you wanted to have a wireless patch, you could get my soundboard in, into your, uh, your video. And I didn't ask for it, but he just went on ahead and set me up. So there was four microphones there, three microphones for each ghost brother and then a fourth mic. Then the ghost, then the ghost hunter showed up. This is a team of six. And on the same table where there were three mics and then one mic by itself, there were now four mics. No, excuse me, six mics. And then the seventh being the one that I was I was connected to. Which meant we had feedback all over the uh, all over the park. And to, to really kick this up even harder, because there were so many people waiting the crowd that was waiting for the ghost hunters were waiting for an extra 20 minutes before they finally showed up. The, again, nobody was pissed because they were the ghost hunters, they're the OGs, you know? And they show up, <clears throat> but now they're having problems with the mics. And God love him. God love him. My, my, uh, my partner in arms, my guy. I got to say, that's what I appreciate about you. Phil Rossi gets out sneaks behind and he's like how can i help you and he actually balanced the sound and fixed the sound for the ghost hunters so i suggest you let that one marinate i'm i'm proud of my boo i'm proud of my boo he, he just he just knocked it out of the park um <clears throat> but then the ghost hunters were, were were kicking around oh and because there was there there was all this 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 chaos going on with the with the sound Jason being Jason, this is something I, I think I learned about Jason Hawes. A uh, gentleman that I've talked about before, and I did a deep dive on some of the stuff that he's done uh, recently on, on YouTube and elsewhere. <clears throat> so Jason is the kind of guy that if technology isn't working or if something isn't going to plan, Jason just tries to take charge and, and, and make sure that the boat doesn't sink. That, that, is, that is the way of Jason Hawes, at least from, from what I'm seeing, right? So, <clears throat> so Jason, instead of being up on the, on the panel, he grabs his mic, he goes out into the audience and he's, 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 he's basically, because he knows his mic works, he is taking questions from everybody. And I mean, I've got my hand raised because the other two moderators are also trying to get their mics to work. And once Phil fixed everything, their mics were working fine. And then Phil could go on ahead and uh, get That's back to the I seat. That's what appreciate about you. Oh, yeah. Jason is in the audience now taking, taking everybody's uh, questions along with the moderators. So that's what's going on. And then I'm raising my hand because I had, I had a serious-ass question. And suddenly Jason comes up to me and hands me the microphone. So I am now literally two feet at most. I am two feet away from Jason Hawes. Now, I don't know if any of you remember this, but Jason actually paid us a visit at Old Spirits because rewind the clock back a bit. Rewind the clock back a bit. I did a, uh, a Grim Gazette on uh, about actually three months ago. Three months ago, we did a... Um, uh, three months ago, we did a a uh, um, a Grim Gazette about about uh, and I and it was and I called it he came clean, okay, and the Grim Gazette then, when I said he came clean, I'm sure people are like, oh, he came clean about uh, Cody and Story and all that. No, this was about <clears throat> uh, he came clean about what happened between him and uh, his former partner in crime. 
and his former partner in crime, uh, um, uh, Grant, Grant Wilson. And if you remember in that episode, I'm getting there, Cammy. I'm getting there. If you remember in that episode, <laughs> I said, I said, can I pause for a minute and just talk about how good Jason Hawes looks? And I described him as being stacked, jacked, and packed. Don't know if any of you remember that. Well, now this is now again, this is this was a now actually I did this this show three months ago. A month ago, Jason Hawes commented on that episode in on YouTube. And this is what he said. Besides having me blushing from 8.30 to 9.30, I think this is a great video. You were respectful, made valid points, and came across professional. To answer your thoughts at 57.30, I just wasn't happy with the direction some networks wanted to go. I'm lucky enough to be in control, and demons and possessions are overrated. Hopefully you can catch the investigations we have recently posted and give us your thoughts. Nice work, sir. Stay safe and on, the, on to the next. Here was my response to that. This is on YouTube. Okay, a little unpacking to do here. One, holy shit, that just happened. Two, I have been watching, and it's pretty cool watching you test the waters of YouTube. For what it's worth, I've been on this platform for a while, so please, if I can help you in this pivot to YouTube, feel free to ask. And then in three, if you're ever in Virginia, OSI would love to show you the sights. He responded again. So I'm having a back and forth with Jason Hawes here. Uh, if I come to Virginia, I would be honored to meet up. So, but but so this is what you got to keep in mind that I described him as being stacked, jacked, and packed. So I I um I'm sitting there with the microphone. Jason is two feet away from me, and I said, "Well, Jason." And Jason's a tall drink of water too. I should also mention that because he's like a I think he's like a, like a like a half foot taller than me. And I said, "Well, Jason, I didn't expect you to be the one to hand me the microphone and to be this close to you." So. I can now finally say to your face, and I stand up and I look at him, and he's looking at me with that this warning, and I said, it's really nice to see that you're still keeping it stacked, jacked, and packed. He loses it. He starts get, he starts laughing, and then and, and he goes, he goes, okay, okay, okay. So here's what happened, everybody. And he tells the story from his perspective. He apparently was just randomly going through the rabbit warren that is YouTube saw the video that I did on the Grim Gazette and just decided he'd watch. And then he said, and then about eight minutes in, this guy starts, you know, he's blushing. He's making me blush because, you know, hey, hey, uh, uh, he's talking about how great shape I'm in, you know. And, and I just went, and, I'm, and then I shout out to everybody. And it's all on the live. It is all on the live. You can see it. And, um, and at one point, I can't remember what was said, but at one point, oh, I then went on ahead and asked, uh, I I can't remember what happened. Yeah, I remember what happened. I asked the question. The question I had to them was, and again, I talked about Beardo. I talked about Beardo gets scared, and I said, Beardo had a show recently where he was talking about the pendulum swinging the opposite way, where instead of everything being a demon, everything being a possession, the, the stuff you see with twin paranormal, the stuff you see over the top with... Um, um, uh, with Mind Seed and Laney and Ben, suddenly there's a shift where things are swinging over to the other side and people are going, you know, I think I want to see something where, where it's legit. You know, people like Amy's Crypt, Paranormal Quest, and so on. And Jason gave me this, uh, he, 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 gave me, he gave me his answer. And that's when I looked out at the crowd and I just went, my man crush deepens! And I mean, I was making him feeling very uncomfortable, but I was I was playing into the shtick, okay? Because uh, I could tell that Jason was kind of tracking with it, as far as I know. <laughs> um, well, then later on, though, in the uh, in in the panel, later on in the panel, Steve Steve Gonzalez says he points to me and he goes, "See, you think you think, sir, that you know Jason here's big, strong, tough guy, stacked." Jacked and whatever, as you said. You know, I mean, I got I got something to tell you. If if you put a fuzzy animal in front of me, you put, you put, you put a kid in trouble, man, he is he he's he's just a he's just a crunchy shell with a with a creamy nougat inside. And from my seat, I, I said at the top of my lungs, my man crush deepens even more. And everyone on the panel is losing their shit. Jason is looking at me, trying to size me up. 
But at that point, at that point, he fist bumped me. And That's what I appreciate <laughs> about you. And I'm gonna come back to this. I'm gonna come back to this. Um and and the, the the rest of the panel was just terrific. It was a really good panel, really solid panel, and it was just it was just great seeing the, the if I scared anybody there, I don't think it was Jason Hawes that I that I scared. I think the one I scared the most was uh, so Dave Tango came up on stage and I I a couple nights before uh, we were um, I, I just did a rewatch of Dune and Dave Tango has this super thick this is Saturday I'm actually talking about Saturday I'm actually talking about Saturday right but Dave Tango has this super thick solid beard now it's not like a like a it's not like this kind of beard it was like out to here and he looked like like he looked like uh um he he looked like Oscar Isaacs from uh, from from Dune. He looked like Duke Leto Atreides. He comes on and and everybody's exclaiming the beer, and I just finally went Atreides, Atreides. I mean, <laughs> he was probably he probably thought I was freaking out. So the Ghost Hunters were kind of truncated on Saturday, but 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 they they killed it. They killed it. It was a great it was a great panel. And then we get to Project Fear, and Project Fear were absolutely just as dynamic just as affable and just as charming as they were last year as a matter of fact uh, when they got settled in i i and you you hear me again you hear me on the, on the video I, I i i shout out to them welcome back home from the uk and chelsea you'll actually see chelsea on our video do this oh like that because she remembered that me and phil sat up front and streamed everything. They kept giving us nods and everything when, when they would do something. And they were like, don't record that, don't record that. And I said, and I, and I had to go, dude, I'm live streaming. <laughs> so awkward, but uh, they were great. No, Project Fear was great. Um, in fact, they were so good that, oh, and I, I forgot to mention this too. Not only was it just, was it Phil and myself, it was Phil, myself, Pip, Tina, and Phil's girls. Uh, so, so it was it was it was like a like a tiny uh extended family affair and the girls uh tina and and bren they both went back to uh they both went back to um the girls went back for the second day because we were we were doing we were waiting to do meet and greets but um the girls went back to see the the second project fear panel I'm gonna let you in on a little something that we didn't that we didn't hear that was pretty amazing, and it also made me re realize I could, in fact, dislike Zach Baggins even more. Apparently, in the first season, uh, Baggins went to uh, went to Dakota, Dakota Layden, guy in charge of the team, and he said, "Yeah, you know, I think the show would be a lot better if you got rid of Chelsea." I mean, think about that for a second. Can I suggest you let that one marinate? Baggins tells Dakota, drop your sister. I mean, <laughs> first off, one. For, yeah, exactly. Exactly, secondhand. Exactly. Well, let's be honest. He is intimidated by someone like Chelsea, who is in the medical profession, has a doctorate, and um, is a confident, beautiful young woman in the paranormal i mean it was ridiculous and the fact that the fact is that you've got a dynamic with with the guys but you throw chelsea in there and it just sharpens up that dynamic even more chelsea not only deals what she gets when uh the only time chelsea has ever bailed the only time chelsea has ever bailed from an investigation it was at crescent and it was because she threw out her back when a bat tried to dive bomb them you know but it wasn't just dakota that would said that said oh hell no it was tanner and alex i mean the four of them are tight four of them are, are mega tight and um it's, it's one of the reasons why i love watching them i mean and and i, and I still and now i remember telling you all i was going to ask the question about 
um, do I ever feel like they're underestimated as paranormal investigators? I never got a chance to ask them any question. And I was actually told by um, Phil and Tina and Pip, they didn't like the tone of the question. It could easily have been misconstrued as something negative when I meant wanted to be something positive. I was ready to reword it, but I never got a chance to ask that question. Um, and but the, the 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 Project Fear team were absolutely brilliant as always. Uh, just great, great individuals. Just a hell of fun. Again, my face hurt from all the laughter, and um, and now I can honestly say I have a wild editor crush on Dakota, and also a bit of of envy. Because they just got, like I said, they just got back from the UK. They have enough footage to last through, not up to, but through 2025. And, you know. Well, pitter powder, let's get at her. That's pretty freaking amazing. That's pretty freaking amazing. And as an editor, I respect that. Um, and I think that was their first trip to the UK. And they, um, um, one of the places they went to, I think it was... Uh, Chattingham Castle. I believe Amy's Crypt has been there, and now Project Fear went there. So I, I have a feeling it's gonna be it's gonna be ridiculously fun. Um okay, you're gonna you're gonna uh you're gonna call it a night. Okay, Cammy, thanks for hanging out with us. We appreciate it. Love you. Have a good night. Um that then then the 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 entire the entire time the entire uh first day uh first panel day of panels ended with kindred spirits, and that was uh um, Amy Bruni and Adam Barry, and they were fine. They were they were they were delightful. They were uh, they, they were Amy and Adam. You know, it's the Amy and Adam show, and they're they're delightful. I I I will say I think the biggest takeaway I had from the Kindred Spirits panel is Amy is trying to <laughs> she's trying to get the best of both worlds. She wants to do a Disney trip, but do an investigation of uh, Walt Disney's former uh, apartment, both at Disney World and in Disneyland. <laughs> Um, I respect I respect the hustle, but unfortunately I don't I don't think she's going to get that. Um Yeah, yeah. That kind of access I don't think is possible. But um anyway. But Amy and Adam were, were awesome. And that was when Amy was talking a little bit about this thing that she's launching called the Paranormal Circle. And because we were there, we could actually jump ahead of the if we if we if we signed up for the paranormal circle, we could go on ahead and we could um, um, sidestep the waiting list and just just get get access. So we we're like, OK. And I looked at Pip, Pip looked at me and I was like, well, what do you think? And we said, sure. So we we, we decided that we were going to do it. Then we saw what was the paranormal circle. And wow. I understand why there was a waiting list for it. And it was, it, it's pretty exciting. There's like, there's like, you know, discounts on, there's discounts from Ghost Top. There's discounts from uh, their, their Strange Escapes plans and, uh, you know, live sit downs with Amy and Adam, you know, online. And I'm like, this is pretty freaking cool. And so, yeah, I was, I was all in for it. Plus, we got a free pin. We got a, we got a nice little lapel pin. We each got lapel pins. I'm like, oh, okay, even better. And it had a nice little steampunk vote, you know, vibe happening. I was like, okay, cool. And then that pretty much wrapped up our Saturday. Um, Saturday was, you know, again, all about the panels, and we were done. We were done by by uh, by by Saturday. So, um, you know, we didn't feel like exploring or anything. Like we were just like, let's just get to the let's just get back to the to the to the house let's let's just chill out let's 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 uh let's get get some rest and um <clears throat> and and we decided on a whim decided to go downstairs and check out the basement because this house that we were in was one old this this airbnb was very old but it also just been renovated uh, and we were like, huh, okay. And Phil was picking up a vibe from the, from, from the basement. So <clears throat> we went down, did some light investigation down in the basement. 
I need to go through that evidence to see if there was anything that we got because I don't want to say there was some vibe happening down there, but there were some things that happened while we were down there in the basement that made me go, okay, that's interesting. It's very interesting. Um, we, oh, and I got to say, you know, again, mad, mad props to our, our girl, Tina Rossi, who just, I mean, man, she nailed it. It was just, it was just the place yes. she found us. More of that, <clears throat> More of that, my girl. I slept hard. Our, I slept hard. Our, all of our beds had memory foam. So I was out. I was out as soon as, as, soon as my head hit the pillow. <clears throat> so we go back Sunday. And Sunday we said that's going to be meet and greet day. And that's going to be, um, it's going to be meet and greet day. But it's also going to be, we, we shop around. If we decide to shop around. We'll also do some investigating we do, if, we, if we can get some investigation in. So we meet the first with well, the one we made priority on was Project Fear because we knew they were going to be the busiest. And and it was great. It was great. First off, the girls, the girls went totally cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs over over the uh, over Project Fear. They, they really enjoyed meeting them. We let the girls go ahead of us so that the parents wouldn't embarrass them. Uh, we got we got photos taken with Project Fear. Really nice people, um, super nice people. Oh, I, I, and I showed them one of the things that came up during the panel, that came up during our visit with them was egg roll. There's an episode of Project Fear where a a a a, a little tabby that's resembling uh, Dorito, uh, but maybe it was about a month younger, uh, hopped up in their laps and basically just well, actually no a month older. Than Dorito was just just making himself right at home with the Project Fear team, and the Fear team fell in love with him. And people were asking about they they christened the the little kitten Egg Roll, and everyone was asking about Egg Roll. Alex was getting a little choked up. Alex was getting a little choked up, and then I told Alex and everybody else the story of EVP, and every all of them were just like, "Oh my god, dude!" You know. <laughs> they were, they, <laughs> Now we couldn't we couldn't chat with them as much as we did last time, but I did remind them I want them to come to Virginia. I want to make them brisket and four cheese mac and cheese. I want to take care of them, and uh, we'll see if they ever take me take me up on that. And then there was Kindred Spirits, and that was where we got a chance to say hey to to Amy and Adam, and you know we we did pictures, uh, we joined the circle. They were they were delightful as they were last year. Um, but the the funnier the funnier bit was that Adam and Tina were bonding because apparently he needed something done DIY and Tina's the DIY goddess next to next to Pip. And somehow Phil got Tina in 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 touch with Adam and the two of them have now become besties. They've become DIY besties and they were like swapping pictures. <laughs> it was ridiculous. It was so funny. And of course, I didn't have the the gumption to take a photograph of it when it was happening. Um, but we signed up for them and we, we, so, so we were like, okay, so we got, we, we took care of the paranormal circle. You know, we both, we all signed up for it. And then of course there was uh, you know, so we did project fear. We did, we did, uh, this and they said, so what do you want to do next? And I said, it might be a big line for the ghost brothers. So why don't we do the ghost brothers next? Well, by then the panels had kicked in. So we were going to have to wait. So that was when uh, I did the Estes method that I found out later. I was streaming it and it was going really well, but it turns out that the, the stream conked out on both YouTube and Twitch. And I apologize about that. But here is what happened and why that's so funny. So um, they just opened up this new building uh, called Tinicum. And it was, they also, that, that was, that was something new. <clears throat> we had access to Mayflower. We had access to Devon. And then we had access to Tinicum. This was the brand new one, right? Um, and I set myself up for an Estes there and we gave it a shot. I come to find out though, and this time no uh, Jubal Early fangirl had anything to do with it. My SB11 no longer works. I have to find out tomorrow 
what the story is about the SB11 because now it's I can't plug headphones into it. So a little frustrating, but we had another. We had, the good news is we had another um, another spirit box we could we could call on. So I set myself up in the spirit box, and I, um, you know, and I, I was I, it was just me and Pip starting off. It was just the two of us, and I put on the blindfold, put on the headphones, went under. As I'm under, um, you know, I'm picking up the stuff that's happening. And I could just hear Phil's voice. I could hear his tenor, you know, like like I could I could hear somebody with a very deep voice asking me questions. You know, that's what it sounded like, but I knew it was Phil. I was like, okay, so Phil's here. So I but but I could then I, I felt like I was getting all wibbly wobbly timey wimey because uh, you know I could hear Pip over here. Then I'd hear Pip over here. Then I'd hear over here. Then I'd hear Phil, Phil and Pip, basically interchangeable, and it was just it was just really disorienting. The funny thing that was that that I didn't know was going on, and apparently this was we we caught all this on film, was people were were coming out. Remember, this is a public event, so people are coming in and coming out, coming in and coming out. They're walking through. They're basically taking in all the sights. But then in the middle of this area. There's this guy doing the ST session. And and I'm just I'm I am I am completely oblivious to what's going on. But then I feel Pip tap me out. I don't know how long I've been under. So I take off the headphones, take off the blindfold, open my eyes. I am surrounded by people. <laughs> there was like there was at least like like 10 or 15 people standing around us all watching me and I just kind of like Oh well, hi! You know, I mean, it, 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 nobody. We didn't break out in spontaneous applause or anything, but it was just, it was just kind of freaky. <laughs> just because when I went in, it was just, it was just Pip, and I expected to just be, to just see Pip, Tina, and and uh, and and Phil. Oh no, oh no! I, I apparently had had brought in an audience, and uh, people were gasping audibly at what was going on. Um, while we did not pick up all of the SD session I am going to release somewhere I am going to release the um, uh, the uh, the full SD session so I've got I just gotta I just gotta pull it off of the of the cards and get it done um that was fun so we got our we got our gear and everything and uh, we, we kept checking to see when the ghost brothers and, and the ghost hunters were gonna come back so the Ghost Brothers eventually, eventually, in the day, and this is the, the, that was the other thing I wanted to say too. Ghost Stop was there. Ghost Stop was actually there at the event. Never got a chance to go back and just say, "Hey guys, I love your gear. I want to let you know. I, you know, I love your. Hey, by the way, my my, my box stopped working. <laughs> so, yeah, it was just it was just ironic that uh, they were actually we actually were all in the same space, and I still couldn't get out to where the ghost the 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 Ghost Stop crew were um but uh but we got to we got to meet the ghost brothers but while we were standing in line for the ghost brothers out of nowhere i see kenny biddle walking through the crowd now if you now for those of you who are, who are in my audience or you're watching on youtube and you you recognize the name kenny biddle kenny biddle is the guy that does the the magazine i believe it's the magazine skeptic inquirer and he is a he is a skeptic. He is not a cynic, but he is a skeptic. And he and Jason are best buds. And he just came in to say hey to everybody. And um, I see him and I go, Kenny Biddle. And he goes, Yeah. And he stopped and had a had a conversation with us. I was just I was floored. I'm like, holy shit, I'm here with Kenny Biddle. And we were we were chatting away. And then I introduced him to Phil. And I go. My buddy Phil here, who I do paranormal investigations with, we do a podcast, uh, or he does a podcast, and I think he would love to have you on there. And and Phil's like, yes, I would. And and then they they exchanged information. So so that was cool. Again, this is just standing in line for the Ghost Brothers. We get to the Ghost Brothers, and Tina and Pip want to do pictures just with them. Then they would do a group picture with 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 us. So what happens? They start hitting on. Tina and, uh, and 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 Pip, the yeah the ghost the ghost brothers hit on our wives. There you go. So, 
And we got the biggest kick out of it. We did. And at one point, Juwan is taking our orders, right? He's taking our orders for, for the for the photographs that we're getting. And he's like, he's like, okay, that'll be, and he, you know, he gives the price. And I go, well, if I throw in an extra 20, will you take the shirt off? And he looks up at me. Because that was the joke was that 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 they were struggling to make sure that Juwan never took his shirt off in in different episodes. <laughs> and and, it, and dur during his panel, he started taking his shirt off. And of course, everybody lost their minds. But uh, Juwan looked at me offended. He was like, yo, man, that ain't enough. <laughs> It's just like okay, okay, fine. If I ask, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna throw in something, it's gonna be like fifty or a hundred. If the ladies had asked, it would have been for free. But uh, there you go. Um, those guys were a stitch, and to meet up, to meet up close and personal. And I, I did feel a little fanboy. I fanboyed of all of my fanboyed over Marcus because I went up there and I said to Marcus, "Look, Marcus, now that I know what the real story is about you guys." Uh, you know, the way I looked at the three of you guys, you know, Dalen was the was the infamous leader, Juwan was the pretty face, and you, my man, were the were the plucky comic relief. I get that. And I said, but when you look at that first investigation and then you follow your progression to Waverly, and I couldn't stop myself. I just looked at him and said, dude, you fucking killed it. You fucking killed it at Waverly. And he and he's like, yo, dog, come here. And he was he was so nice. He was so freaking nice. Um, they, they were they were fun. They were a lot of fun. And then they and so we we basically had did everything we wanted to do. We 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 you know we 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 got the project fear. We did the touch base with kindred spirits and and did the the uh, the paranormal circle. And then we got to see the ghost ghost brothers, and we were going to pretty much move on to you know some more investigating i said actually i think i want to stand in line for the ghost hunters and and i i told them i said look i want to make sure jason knows that i appreciate you know him playing along i want to make sure he was he was being a very good sport because i was over the top and when you watch the video i was in fact at one point after I asked the question, Jason had moved like at least six feet away from me. And I, and I just giggled because I was like, he is all the way over there now. <laughs> I was just scared the piss out of him. I mean, it was hysterical. But I wanted him to know that I, I appreciate it and, he, and that we were such, he was a good sport. We're standing in line for the ghost hunters. And Jason, I think, had to, you know, go to the little ghost hunters room. So he's walking by and he makes eye contact with us. Phil and Pip both chime in. We promise he is in much better spirits. He will behave himself. And he looked me up and down and went, doubt it, and kept going. And uh, we get up to the table, and he sees me, and I've got my card out. And I was getting ready to get the, you know, get get the whole deal. I was going to get the, the ghost hunter photograph, and I was going to get everybody to sign it. He grabs the photo, and... He and as he's signing it, he says to the woman taking the cash, he says, "Don't worry about it." And she looks at me. She looks at the picture. She looks at me, and he's like, "He's like, make sure to sign it." It's this guy, and and they're like, "Oh, it's the guy." And I I said, "Dude, I just came over here to tell you what a great sport you are. You don't have to do this." He goes, "No, I got to do this." And Jason comped me the full signatures of the ghost hunters. And the the shot of of all of the entire Ghost Hunter Taps team. I was absolutely floored. I'm not going to go into the to the numbers, but let's just say he didn't have to do that, but he went out of his way to do that. And we started talking about Annabur. And I said, I'm serious, Jason. I don't know if you if you were ever in or if if the Ghost Hunters or you and JV are in town you know in september but you know if you want if you want to you know if, if you want to come down or if you're ever in the area we'd love to take you to annaberg we'd love to have you there for when we, when we go in there jason gave me his personal email not his business email his personal email and said contact me
I suggest you let that one marinate? I, I, I'm still marinating that. I'm still marinating that, okay? And, and I was just blown away by the fact that my shtick <laughs> made that kind of impression because Jason was a super, he was, he, he was, he was just the best, of, the best of, the best of sports. And after that, we then met, we then met Chris Williams and we had a real heart to heart because when I asked the question about the pendulum swinging, I remembered Chris was behind Jason doing this. Cause she was like, yeah, I'm done with it. I'm, you know, I'm done with demons. I'm done with it. And she could not have been nicer. I know she comes across a little standoffish, I think sometimes online, but she was so delightful in person. Just, just really, really nice. And, and uh, our day ended, well, no, hang on, hang on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So we did, we did a couple other, um, uh, a couple other investigations, you know, you know, in the, in the buildings. And then we called it a day. So we find a cafe and we are, uh, um, we're, we have a really nice, nice dinner. Pip and I are kind of vacillating on whether or not we're going to spend the night or if we're going to just, just drive home. And then two guys come up to our table and say, Hey, are you guys old spirits investigations? I thought Phil was going to pass out. <laughs> I truly believed Phil thought he was going to pass out. Um, this guy remembered us from last from the from the last year when Phil and I were standing in line with these guys at um, uh, for Amy and Adam and their meet and greet, and and they had just formed a uh, a group, and they wanted advice on where to start and i was like this is this is what we're, we're we're working for this is what we're working for right this this is what what we're we're, we're striving for and he um uh he gave his advice i gave my advice we exchanged uh contact info and he was like yeah we're planning to come back here and do a private investigation at uh penhurst if you guys want in We'll put you at the top of the list. And we were just like, absolutely. I would love to tackle Penhurst. I just know it's going to be a little more intense because it's not going to be during the day. The, the place intimidates me during the day. I can't imagine what this place will do to me at night. I just know wherever I'm going, I'm not going by myself. Just straight up F that. It's not going to happen. <laughs> um... So anyway, um, so, so yeah, so that happens, and then we head home. Now, while all this is going on, while this entire investigation, or sorry, while this entire Penhurst Paracon is going on, I have finally met, um, because she, she had flown out all the way from LA, she had flown all the way out here to uh, to to the East Coast, and she was actually turning it into a like a like a paranormal weekend. She did the Penhurst Paracon, and then she was gonna end with things doing doing some stuff in Gettysburg. It was Holly Weird Paranormal, and if you don't know who Holly Weird Paranormal is, let me just go on ahead and pull up that because they have got a hella good podcast that you should be listening to. Um, And there it is. Holly Weird Paranormal, a true crime and paranormal podcast. Yep, this is them. This is them. Let's see if I can just pull them up. There it is. <clears throat> so, so this is Holly Weird Paranormal right here. And um and they are an absolute riot. Actually, you should recognize Holly Weird because well, her name is Tammy. Um Tammy has been on the Grim Gazette before because if you remember, I did a news story, uh, I believe a week or two ago, where I talked about a uh, TikTok, a, a TikTok paranormal investigation, something or other that went horribly, horribly wrong. 
Well, she was the one that we, that we used uh, her clip and, and her coverage of it. And we met finally face to face, but we kept missing each other during during um, uh, during Paracon. So then, but we had exchanged numbers, and I said, "So what are you doing tonight?" She goes, "Well, I'm doing something at eight o'clock in Gettysburg." And I said, "Well, would you like to get together for dinner?" So Pip and I, after after we gotten back the night before, and hey, Walker, how are you? After we got back. We then drove back up to up to Pennsylvania, and Phil met us up there. We met her in Gettysburg, and we sat down. We had dinner. We sat down to well after we had battled all traffic and everything. Um, we finally got together at like quarter to seven. We shut down the the tavern we were in. We were talking hardcore paranormal. It, it just there, there was never a lull in the conversation. And everything that I could have hoped was surpassed. She is absolutely delightful. And uh, we're trying to convince her to come out for Annaberg. But um, she was amazing. Tammy was absolutely amazing. So do yourself a favor. They're Holly Weird Paranormal. Follow them. The reason I'm, I'm, it says I'm not following is because I'm just, I, I'm not logged in. So that's, that's the thing. I, I am, trust me, I am following. But um, she and her partner are absolutely amazing. Um, her podcast partner, not her partner partner. Um, she's a dog person too. So she and Phil were bonding on that. But she loved the fact that we had a, a cat named EDP. And have they read podcasting your dog? Hey, I, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> um, no, actually, we knew each other. We we clicked when we actually met uh, through TikTok, and and that was actually how our Penhurst Paracon weekend ended. Was last night when we road tripped out to Gettysburg to have dinner with her, and it wound up being like a a a three hour extravaganza, just us sitting down, just just chewing the fat with her, and she was absolutely amazing. She was absolutely amazing. Tammy Chavez, that's her name. Um, do yourself a favor. And, no, I'm not doing that. Hell no. Hell no. Hard no. No. Um, but do yourself a favor. Uh, check out Holly Weird Paranormal. They're absolutely amazing. I love them dearly. Um, yeah, Tammy, Tammy was all that in a bag of chips. All that in a bag of chips. Which brings me to what I... And I wanted to come full circle about this. Um, it's really, really cool when you meet people that you respect and you meet people that you admire and they wound up not being dicks. <laughs> you know, I mean, the Ghost Brothers, Project Fear, Amy and Adam, the entire Ghost, Hunt, Ghost Hunter crew. What, what amazing people. Absolutely amazing people. And... Yeah, I, I am, I'm going to keep, I'm going to fight for this. It, it sucks that I'm in the position that I'm in, but I am not going to, uh, I'm not going to let the, I'm, you know, when everyone says, well, what's the universe telling you? Listen to the universe. What's it telling you? It's telling me that I had an amazing time this weekend, <clears throat> And that the people that I have met through the paranormal and the friends that the friends like like Walker that I that I, that, you know, are now making that jump with me from podcasting to the paranormal. <clears throat> um, it's all worth fighting for. So I am going to do that. I'm, I'm pushing forward. And. Um, and and. You know, if, if you if you get a chance, if you if you get a chance to do the um, uh, the Penhurst Paracon, I highly recommend it. This is this was an amazing experience, and I didn't think it'd get any better than last year's, apart from the logistics, of course. But they they took care of the logistics, and I thought, well, anything beyond this is gonna be is gonna be just you know icing on the cake. But man, that cake was amazing. <laughs> it really, it really, they they just knocked it out of the park. 
I cannot stress that enough. This was an astounding experience. It was great being able to meet Kenny Biddle, Tammy, Jason, everybody, you know, all, all these wonderful people in the paranormal. And um, if I can if I can make that thing with Jason happen, oh, I'm gonna make it happen. <laughs> but one one thing at a time. I'm gonna sit down with Jason, send him photographs and write up and go, so what do you think? And I'm gonna just hope, crossing fingers, I'm gonna hope that uh, you know, um, what's June, July, August four months advance notice might be enough to book this but we'll we're gonna go we're, we're gonna cross our fingers and you know slaughter a couple of chickens and hope for the best um but even if it isn't even if it isn't annaberg if it's something else <clears throat> yeah sure absolutely we'll we'll make it happen we'll make it happen on that note everybody i i think we're gonna wrap up this uh this episode this issue of um of the Grim Gazette issue number 16. For those of you who have been uh who have been hanging out since the beginning, thank you all so much. You know what to do. You can always uh go to our Discord and leave us a news story for the Grim Gazette. Drop in there a um drop in there a uh um a, a paranormal clip, keep it under 5 minutes. For me to analyze, it can be something super intense. It could be the, the skinwalker that we saw tonight. Again, thank you, Pip. Um, if you want to challenge me, by all means, please do. I don't want it all to be all, all debunks. I want I want something to challenge me as well. As far as paranormal topics, if you if you've got a paranormal topic you want me to do a deep dive on, feel free to suggest that. And if you're not uh, part of the discord that's okay you can go to youtube and in a um in the comment section you can leave me a clip leave me a url i'll go ahead and take a look at it and if it's worthy of the grim gazette i will drop it in there but thank you all so much for being part of this and thank you all for um just making it a blast to come here and and share the share the stranger side of the world with you so again i appreciate you all the best to you and yours and until next week stay weird